I want to talk about one more thing about uh, torque before I go into a long, well, not long, I don't have the time, <laughs> go into some discussion of rotational inertia. So it has to do with um, sort of a way to look at torque. So um, let me write down this torque that I wrote here in three different ways. Um, I won't really explain why yet. But let me just write that down. Um, everyone can see, uh, let me put this down. <coughs> everyone can see the board where <coughs> torque is written, yes? Yeah. So let me do that. Sorry, I just neurodic double checking recording. Um, I am going to write this in, well, let me leave this as a general, generic expression and write it in two different ways. I am going to write this as F sine theta times r, or if it strikes my fancy, I'll say it's f times r sine theta, but we did this parenthesis particular. Um, both of these ways represent a particular way of describing the torque. So you could take this as the general formula for the magnitude of torque. Well, um, here's a two different ways of interpreting it. Let's say you had, let's say, you know, this is a result of a force that points in a particular direction, acting at a point where r vector it works out this way. I'm going to just, uh, you know, so, you know, this could be the actual r vector, right? But I'm going to imagine translating it over so that I draw my r this way. And what this formula is saying is, you know, the magnitude is magnitude of F times magnitude of R times the sine of the angle between them. Right? That's sort of the neutral version where you are not taking any particular geometric interpretation. But here's a way you can take a geometric interpretation in both of these cases. You could say, uh, you could take this view. So what this is, is you're saying, well, I want to take a component of force. And what this F sine theta is, it's this component of force. This is my F sine theta. You can see it in the geometry here, right? Or I could call this the perpendicular component of force. So perpendicular component of force times the, the displacement R. That's one way of looking at it. And there are problems where it's convenient to look at it that way. You'll see that in homework. Um, but um, you can also insist that, well, that's not the only way to look at it. There's a second way to look at it. It's to say, well, I'm going to leave the force alone, and I'm going to look at the perpendicular component of the displacement. So instead of look, taking this view, I'm going to say, well, let's take a component of R that's uh, perpendicular to this line, so this R, this component here. So this would be the perpendicular component of R. And, um, and you know, in terms of that, this would be the force times R perpendicular. And you know, if I had to pick between these two different interpretations, I will tell you that this is uh, uh, more commonly useful. And that's why this actually gets its own name. This is called lever arm the perpendicular component of displacement that matters for rotation, it's called the lever arm. It gets its own name. <laughs> because it's useful that often. And um, the best uh, uh, demonstration I have for that is this thing that I keep kicking around down here. Um, so it's a spool, right? And um, I will show you two, um, well, one kind of expected way this moves and two different ways where it moves in an unexpected way. So, you know, I'm not doing a magic trick, but you know, it's nothing special, it's just a spool with a, a wire uh, wrapped around it. So right now it's wrapped around it from the top. If I pull it um, to your left, which direction do you think this spool will roll? Like I'm gonna pull, which direction should it roll? Counterclockwise or clockwise? 
counterclockwise, right? All right, good, good. Um, that's the expected one. Let me do the first of the unexpected motion. So I'm going to take this spool and um, I'm going to pull it. So this time the string comes from the bottom. Which way do you expect it to roll? Clockwise or counterclockwise? A lot of people think it'll roll clockwise. Let me try it. Also counterclockwise. And it almost makes sense. This is, um, what, so using the co contact points as the center of rotation, what is the direction of the torque due to this pull? Counterclockwise, right? Yeah, so it is uh, rolling in a way that's consistent with the counterclockwise rotation. Now, the reason a lot of you had the intuition for clockwise rotation is that you are actually imagining this. You are imagining this as being supported in the center. Then as I pull this out, it'll be clockwise rotation, right? So, you know, when we are looking at it in a static equilibrium sense, those two descriptions somehow must agree. That uh, when I use this bottom as the center of rotation, which easily gives a counterclockwise rotation, that has to agree with when I pick the actual center center as the center of rotation. So what are we forgetting that many of you are missing that this has to end up having um, net counterclockwise net torque? What are you missing here in your consideration? Let me give you one hint. It must be some kind of force that you are forgetting. So, I mean, you are considering this tension. You are saying, okay, this tension force is giving um, clockwise rotation. That's why many of you said clockwise. But I'm telling you that you guys are forgetting one particular force, which is giving you counterclockwise torque. With the, you know, this is the center and resulting in net counterclockwise rotation. Friction. Yeah, it's friction. Yeah, so, you know, gravity and normal force, they do nothing. They act on the, you know, more or less the center. There's no torque due to gravity or um, no, normal force. So it's friction that, you know, there's a friction. As I pull it to the left, there's a friction acting to the right. And it's that friction force that's providing counterclockwise torque. And I guess because it's at the greater radius, it's uh, um, generating greater torque with a smaller amount of force. So that the net result is that it rolls uh, counterclockwise. Yeah. So I think I've mentioned this class several times. We try to ignore friction except when we can't. This is one of those cases where except when you can't. When someone describes something rolling without uh, sleeping, that will always involve friction even when the problem doesn't explicitly mention it. Uh, okay, let me give you one more type of pull, and I have to do this kind of carefully. Um, as you watch me pull, what would you guess the net torque on this spool is? Yeah, it's not rotating at all, right? I'm pulling in a very particular kind of way, um, designed to give it a um, give it a zero torque. So. Um, so let's use the uh, bottom as my center of rotation. That will make the consideration much simpler because I don't have to worry about friction. However much friction is there, I don't want to have to worry about it. So um, what do you notice about the direction I'm pulling with the tension that I am somehow giving the spool zero net torque? Radius coming from this point, right? So if you uh, take this uh, tension line, it looks as though it's going straight to this point. Okay. So here, I'm pulling this in a way designed to make a lever arm equal to zero. So this particular demo is um, illustrating the usefulness of the lever arm concept. Because if, we, you know, if you're trying to um, do this calculation, then it takes maybe more geometric effort. But lever arm is a way of um, describing a particular type of geometry that's useful in figuring out the torque. Um, I probably should, um, in a future class, we'll work on some problems that, um, uh, where I can describe to you the procedure for identifying this lever arm. 
I mean, um, you know, you can do it in a way that feels comfortable to you. It's, in, you know, as long as this uh, is the component of the R vector that's uh, perpendicular to the force, then however you do it, it's the correct way to do it. Um, but there's a particular procedure you can follow that will uh, make things maybe easier. Um, uh, I will cover some problem in a future class where I can demonstrate that procedure.